Well, hello there. Come on in. I'm Chris Brown. I'm your humble chimney sweep. I was just going over your chimney inspection report, but now that you're here, make yourself comfortable. Let's go over it together, shall we? Okay, now let's take a look at the inspection report and see how it reads out. This is a generic report. This is exactly what you will get, only your information obviously will be filled into all these blanks. The upper right hand corner of the report is the legend. Each one of these initials pertain to something. A is consistent with the age of the chimney. B, C comments below. C, repairs needed. D, need further evaluation or E, not applicable. And they're placed into the boxes next to the parts of the chimney that can be easily identified in this diagram. And then of course you'll find my comments here below. Now let's take a look at your particular, your personal report. So stay with me. Hey, Wendy, it was great to see you out at the house today. What a beautiful house. Great location, too. Let's see. Let's start with the Din fireplace. Let me give you a quick history. I've been sweeping chimneys since 1980, and when I started uh, chimney sweeping, most of my clients were wood stove customers. Wood stoves burn uh, very dirty. They incomplete the combustion, and a lot of the uh, creosote, which fuels chimney fires, would go up in a vapor form, stick in the flue, stick in the flue, stick in the flue system. And um, anybody throwing some paper in there, a burning piece of paper would go up and catch the chimney on fire. Well, back in the 80s, uh, when that was happening, uh, and by the way, it was happening, you'd find chimney fires in the news almost daily in the wintertime. Uh, we didn't have uh, shredders. If you had a shredder, you were a bank or a big, big corporation company. Um, so people burnt their documents. We were worried about uh, people stealing our identity uh, even back then. Anyway, uh, so it comes from uh, in open fireplaces like this setting, it comes from burning wet or green wood or both. And basically what happens is the, the, uh, all the combustion doesn't complete in the firebox area and a lot of the unburnt creosote goes up and, and sticks in the chimney, waiting for somebody to throw something in their burning paper to go up and catch it on fire. This fireplace has had a chimney fire. That's what I'm uh, coming around the barn to. And back in those days, insurance companies, which would pay to automatically pay to uh, have them rebuilt, repaired, whatever, because it is sudden occurrence, just like lightning hitting or a, <clears throat> excuse me, earthquake or something. <clears throat> excuse me. So they would call your local chimney sweep to come out and make sure that that's exactly what happened and that's what I, we did. So this is at a chimney fire. Uh, dislodged the damper uh, probably from all the force of the fire going up the chimney. Um, and what happens is you have something called thermal shock. In other words, the flue system, which is three quarter inch poured clay liner system, it's kind of like a dinner plate. You take a dinner plate out of the hot oven and stick it under cold water, that thermal shock generally will crack or bust the plate. Sometimes that's what happens in the inside of these flue systems. My recommendation here is to sweep it out and run a scanner through it, and I've given you a price on doing that. Just making sure these folks aren't ha going to have any problems with this fireplace. Uh, let's continue. So this gives you more of a view up there of that uh, creosote after it's been burnt. Uh, firebox area itself, missing mortar, soft mortar in the firebox area, giving you uh, a um, uh, repair uh, estimate on that as well. Uh, din fireplace, din fireplace, vented gas logs, big chunks of, of carbon soot coming off these. This thing is burning raw gas. And what that means is it's producing a truckload of carbon monoxide and a truckload of carbon soot. It should be cleaned, the logs should be cleaned off. And, uh, and the burner needs to be adjusted. That's what's causing this. Uh, luckily, there was no carbon monoxide coming into the uh, room, but these should be cleaned by a licensed plumber, usually handles that. Hearth and patio, fireplace shop will handle that for you as well. Dampers must uh, remain open 24 seven on all vented gas fireplaces. And the reason for that is if you forget to and close it, forget to open it, and fire up those logs, you fill your house up with something you can't see or smell, obviously carbon monoxide. View of the flue system, don't have any problems there. Upstairs, wood burner, missing some mortar in the profile joint. This is at the uh, firebox area where, uh, where the surround and hearth extension 
um, uh, attach and uh, that's a code violation that needs to be repaired and I've given you a price on doing that. Working damper, flu system looks good. Let's go up on top. Uh, let's see here, top of the bedroom, uh, living room fireplace looks great. Uh, flashing looks good. This cap covers the whole crown up here, so no problems with that. Uh, let's see, we're missing, there we go. On the din fireplace, you can see kind of an aerial shot. Remember, these caps are not code required in the state of North Carolina. You can see a lot of rust going on here. Someday you'll replace it, uh, but the uh, uh, homeowner is not under any uh, obligation to do that. It's not, they're not code required. However, you do have some cracks in the concrete crown up here at the very top of the chimney, and that is a water leak. Flashing looks good. Both shoulders are leaking right here. A little caulk will take care of that and re-pour the crown, and I've given you a price on doing that. Questions for you, for me, give me a call, 704-526-6348. You can email me at chris at affordablesuite.com. Thank you.